تعجل بالقرآن من قبل أن يقضى إليك وحيه وقل رب زدني علما إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد So carrying on then with العقيده الواسطية Today then we get to the section where Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى is going to speak about al-istiwa istiwa Allah ala al-arsh ala arshihi this topic now is going to discuss the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the istiwa that Allah is the most high rose above the throne is above and distinct from all of the creation. So the first ayah that is mentioned here, and there are in fact seven ayat, seven ayat in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the throne, mentions the istiwa rather, ذكر المؤلف رحمه الله ثبوت استواء الله على عرشه وأنه في سبعة مواضع من القرآن So here Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah talks about the istiwa that Allah rose above the throne and that this is mentioned in seven places in the Quran The first one here الموضع الأول قوله في سورة الأعراف إن ربكم الله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش سورة الأعراف 54 That indeed your Lord Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days, then he rose above the throne. That your Lord Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days, and then he rose above the throne. In this section then, it indicates that Allah rose above the throne in reality, that is not some type of metaphor, it is not some type of simile, it is that Allah rose above the throne in reality, and that is mentioned, مَعَنَاهُ لَا يَحْتَمِلْ التَّأْوِيلِ وصريح فِي أَنَّهُ بِذَاتِهِ إِسْتَوَى إِسْتِوَاءً يَلِيقُ بِجَلَالِهِ وَعَظَمَتِهِ that this is in reference to the reality that Allah himself rose above the throne as is befitting of his majesty. So, إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ اللَّهِ أَيْ هُوَ الْمَعْبُودُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَعِبَادَةُ غَيْرِهِ بَاطِلَةُ the beginning of this ayah, it mentions, Inna Rabbakum Allah, that indeed your Lord is Allah, the one who created, الذي خلق السماوات, who created the heavens and the earth in six days. This ayah, along with the previous one, الرحمن على العرش استوى, both of them indicate the istiwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And it mentions that Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days. The first of those days is mentioned as being the day of Sunday. And the last of those days being the Friday. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Six days. Beginning from the Sunday, ending on the Friday. And those six days are like the days that we know now. Because it is not mentioned in regards to any other detail of what those six days were. They are mentioned in the indefinite form. And as a consequence, the understanding of them is upon what is known. And what is known are the days that we know. So the reference here to the six days is like the days that we know and we are aware of. The first of them, the Sunday, and the last of them, the Friday. So, خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامِ خَلَقَ أَيْ أَنْشَأَ وَأَوْجَدَ وَالْخَلْقِ هو اختراء الشيء على غير مثال سابق Allah created and the meaning of that creation is to bring into existence upon no previous example Allah brought into existence the heavens and the earth Upon no previous example or similarity, أوجد وأنشأ اختراع الشيء على غير مثال سبق. Creating something, bringing it into existence upon no other likeness or previous example. ففيه إضافة الفعل والخلق إليه. سبحانه على جهة الحقيقة. So this action of creating, it is attributed to Allah سبحانه وتعالى directly that He created the action of creating attributed to Allah in reality. لأنها الأصل because that is the origin and the default here. When Allah tells us He is the one who created the heavens and the earth, then that action of creating is attributed to Allah in reality. وَقَدْ رَدَّ بْنُ الْقَيِّمْ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَنْ زَعَمَ أَنَّ خَلْقَهُ وَفِعْلَهُ مَجَازٌ مِنْ وُجُوهٍ عَدِيدًا and Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala has refuted all of those who claim that the creation of Allah and his action, what is mentioned here is some type of metaphor, metaphoric or simile, that it's not in reality. Ibn al-Qayyim refuted their claims that this is false what they are claiming. This creation of Allah was a creation in reality that Allah created the heavens and the earth. في ستة أيام in six days أولها يوم الأحد وآخرها يوم الجمعة The first of those was the Sunday and the last of them was the Friday. And in fact, الشيخ الثيمين رحمه الله تعالى mentions that منها أربعة أيام للأرض ويومان للسماء. That four days were upon the creation of the earth and two days in regards to the heavens. So then هذا هو المتبادر إلى الأذهان يعني اجتمع الخلق كلهم وهذه الأيام كأيامنا. هذا هو المتبادر إلى الأذهان وهو ظاهر الأدلة 
that these six days, they are as we recognize and understand days to be. That it was six days as we know days to be. ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ So then after the creation of the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then rose above the throne. أي استوى استواء يليق بجلاله And that was in a manner that is suitable to his majesty. We always say that about all of the attributes of Allah. All of them are in a manner that is suitable to his majesty. In a manner that is suitable to his might and majesty. So Allah rose up above the throne in a manner suitable to his majesty. لا تكيفه ولا تمثله ولا يعلم كيف هو إلا هو So you do not try to imagine how that happens. You do not try to give some description imagination to how that happens and how Allah rose above the throne. We do not do that. And we do not know that as the famous statement of Al-Imam Malik is mentioned. Al-Istiwa, when that man is mentioned, when Al-Imam Malik was giving a lesson and a man walked in and the man started to question Al-Imam Malik regarding how Allah rose above the throne. كيف استوى? That's what the man said to Al-Imam Malik. How did Allah rise above the throne? But we've said before and we've mentioned before, Al-Kayfu Majhul. So Al-Imam Malik said to that man, and it mentions in the narration how Al-Imam Malik became extremely agitated at this question. In some of the narrations it mentions his face became red at this question. He became agitated at this question. In some narrations that he began to sweat slightly at the agitation of this question. How did Allah rise above the throne? And Imam Malik said to him, Al-Istiwa Ma'loom. The Istiwa of Allah rising above, that is known. Al-Istiwa Ma'loom. It is known, أي في لغة العرب, in the Arabic language, istawa, yastawi, istiwa. In that context, in that meaning of that word, it is known in the Arabic language what that means. Wal kayfu majhul. But how? How did Allah rise up? How does that happen? How does Allah do that? That is unknown to us. أي كيفية استوائه لا يعلمها إلا هو How he rises up above the throne is not known to anyone except Allah. That is not known except to Allah. He is aware of his attributes but we do not know of the how of that. فَالْكَيْفُ مَجْهُولُ أَيْ كَيْفِيَّةُ اسْتِوَائِهِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُوَ لكن الإيمان به أي بالاستواء واجب لتكاثر الأدلة في إثباته But having iman in that is obligatory having iman in al-istiwa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above the throne having iman in that is wajib because of the multiple evidences that exist affirming that and the fourth thing as-su'alu anhu أي عن الكيفية بدعة إذ لا يعلم كيفية استوائه إلا هو. And asking 
asking the question, how? How does Allah rise above the throne? How is this attribute, is that attribute? Asking the how, then that is a bid'ah. So four things altogether. Four things Al-Imam Malik said to him. Al-Istiwa ma'lum. Wal-Kaifu majhul. Wal-Imanu bihi wajib. Wal-Su'alu anhu bid'ah. Four things. Scholars have even written books just on that statement of Al-Imam Malik. There are independent books written just on that statement of Al-Imam Malik and that narration and the chains and the explanation of it because it is something that explains the principles of the names and attributes. Al-Istiwa ma'loom The attributes of Allah, they are known. When we mentioned the different attributes, the attributes, those names in the Arabic language, they are known. So al-istiwa ma'loom, just like all of the attributes are ma'loom. But then al-kayfu majhul, the howness of those attributes is unknown. The how of Allah rising above the throne is unknown. The how of the hands of Allah, the how of the eyes of Allah, the how is unknown. But despite that, al-imanu bihi wajib. Having iman in those attributes is obligatory. You must affirm all of the attributes and have iman in them. At the beginning of al wasatiyah we mentioned that we believe nu'minu bima wasafa Allahu bihi nafsahu wa wasafa bihi rasuluhu. We believe in all of that which Allah has attributed to himself and his messenger has attributed to him. We have affirmation and belief in all of that. Even if the kayf, the how is unknown to us. And the fourth part, as-su'alu anhu bid'ah. Questioning that, but how, but how this and but how that, then that is an innovation. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given us the knowledge of the how. وَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا As Allah mentioned, you have not been given from knowledge except a small amount. In the Qur'an where it mentions about the soul, what is the soul? And then Allah mentioned, وَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا You have not been given from knowledge except a small amount. So we do not know the reality of the soul. What is the soul? How is it in the body? How is it blown into the child when the child is in the womb? The soul, we don't know the reality of it. We have not been given the knowledge of it. And the same with these attributes, the kayf, the how of them, we do not know. And so asking that question and trying to get into something that the revelation has not told us about, then you are delving into affairs beyond the boundaries and the realms of what you are supposed to be delving into. It is not correct for a person to start asking those questions. That's why they say when it comes to the decree of Allah, when it comes to the decree of Allah, you do not ask the question, why? When it comes to the decree, you do not ask why. Why did Allah do this and why does Allah do that? And when it comes to the names and attributes, you do not ask how. How are these attributes and how are those attributes? And how does Allah do this and how does Allah do that? Allah hasn't told us. And on top of that, the scholars, they say, another reason why it is not suitable and befitting or correct for a person to delve into those affairs and start asking how this and how that. Another evidence as to why you don't. The companions of the Prophet wasallam, who were the most eager and enthusiastic to gain knowledge, never asked the messenger 
How? They never asked the messenger, how does Allah do this? How that? How this? Yet they were the most enthusiastic for knowledge and the most eager for knowledge. And they would not have left anything from knowledge except that they were striving to go to the messenger and ask about it. Yet when it came to the names and attributes, they never went and asked the messenger, how, how does Allah rise above his throne? They never did. They knew that Allah has not informed us of how. And when we talk about all of the other attributes, we've mentioned some of them already. The eyes of Allah or the face of Allah, the hands of Allah. They never used to go and ask the messenger how, how this and how that. They knew the meanings of those words and the attributes in the Arabic language. It is known. Al-istiwa ma'loom. But the kayf is majhool. But still, al-imanu bihi wajib. And as-su'alu anhu bid'ah. So, it then mentions, فَكَذَلِكَ كَذَلِكَ يَجِبُ أَن نُثْبِتَ لَهُ صِفَاتًا لَا تُشْبِهُ الصِّفَاتِ فَإِثْبَاتُنَا لِلصِّفَاتِ إِثْبَاتْ وُجُودْ لَا إِثْبَاتْ تَكْيِيفْ وَتَمْثِيلْ So when we affirm the attributes of Allah, we are affirming them as the attributes of Allah and that they exist as attributes of Allah. We are not affirming or going into the how of those attributes. If al-ilm bil-sifa far'un an al-ilm bil-mawsuf because having knowledge of the attribute is a branch of having knowledge of the entity that the attribute is upon. But do we have knowledge of the Zatullah? Do we have knowledge of the details of Allah and the essence of Allah? We do not have the details of that. So if you do not have the detail of that and the how of that, then you cannot possibly have the how of the attributes of Allah also because understanding the how of the attributes it is an offshoot or a branch of understanding the how of the essence of Allah thatullah and since we do not know that then we do not know the how of the attributes of Allah either إذ العلم بالصفة فرع عن العلم بالموصوف وَلَا يَعْلَمُ كَيْفَ هُوَ إِلَّا هُوَ So nobody knows how He is, how Allah is, other than Allah Himself. وَكَذَلِكَ يُقَالُ فِي بَقِيَّةِ الصِّفَاتِ كَصِفَةِ الْمَجِيءِ وَالنُّزُولِ وَالْإِتْيَانِ وَالْوَجْهِ وَالْيَدْ وَنَحْوِ ذَلِكَ فَهَذَا الْجَوَابِ الْوَارِدِ عَنْ مَالِكْ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ كَافٍ شَافٍ فِي سَائِرِ الصِّفَاتِ This is why the scholars, they wrote books just on that statement of Al-Imam Malik. Because that statement of Al-Imam Malik, it is not specific to Al-Istiwa. That statement of Al-Imam Malik is applicable to all of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same principles mentioned there, those four points are applicable throughout to all of the other attributes also. قال الذهبي الإمام الذهبي said فانظر إليهم كيف أثبت الاستواء لله وأخبروا أنه معلوم لا يحتاج لفظه إلى تفسير ونفوا عنه الكيفية أما نعم so الإمام الذهبي says look how they affirmed الاستواء to Allah that Allah rose above the throne and they mentioned that it is known and the word al-istiwa does not require any further explanation or tafsir and they negated any type of kayfiya. So we do not go into the how and people they do that. 
by their mistake. Like for example, and we'll come to it in more detail in a moment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is mentioned in the hadith mutawatir, yanzilu rabbuna ila sama'i dunya idha baqiya thuluthu layli l'akhir. When the last third of the night remains, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven. But then the deviants, the people who start to go into the how, they start to say, but the last third of the night, somewhere in the world is always the last third of the night. Right now, already in the eastern side of the world, they will be three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours ahead of us. It's already nighttime. Australia, those places, it's already nighttime. Risha, everything gone over there into the last third of the night. So then, throughout, at all times, that time period continues to move across the globe. So somewhere, it is always the last third of the night. Somewhere, it is always the last third of the night. So then they say, how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend? How does Allah descend in the last third of the night? When across the world, somewhere is always the last third of the night. Does that mean Allah is always descending? Does that mean Allah is never above his throne? Does that mean this? Does that mean that? And they go into all these types of things that Allah has not placed any burden upon us to go into. And that is the problem with the people of innovation and why they went astray. The majority of the people of innovation in the early times, they went astray on these affairs of aqidah in the names and attributes because they were trying to overthink the affair and go into the how. How does this happen? How does Allah do that? And when they started going into that detail of how, 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 they ended up with all types of different answers and they deviated away from the methodology of Ahl Sunnah in affirming those attributes without going into the how this and the how that and making up your own answers. Because Allah has not informed us in the revelation of how he does this or how he does that. So then Al-Imam Al-Dhahabi says, أما معنى الاستواء في اللغة فلها أربعة معان تأتي بمعنى على وبمعنى ارتفع وبمعنى صعد واستقر Linguistically the word استوى it can have different meanings in the Arabic language and as you can see here they all revolve around the same thing. Ala, irtafa'a, sa'ida. All of those mean to go up, to rise. Ala, irtafa'a, sa'ida. All of those indicate going up and rising up. And istaqarra, indicating to become established. So Allah rose above the throne. فَهَذِهِ الْأَرْبَعَةِ الَّتِي ذَكَرَهَا ابْنُ الْقَيِّمِ رحمه الله هي التي تدور عليها تفاسير تفاسير السلف these four meanings على وارتفع وصعد واستقر all of them similar all of these kinds of meanings that is what the salaf they mentioned in their tafsir regarding Allah استوى على عرشه وعلى العرش the istiwa is upon those meanings. Qala al-Bukhari rahimahu Allah fi sahihi Qala mujahid istawa ala ala al-arsh Istawa ala ala al-arsh Wa qala Ishaq ibn Rahoya Sami'atu ghayra wahidin min al-mufassirin Yaqulun ar-Rahmanu ala al-arsh istawa Ay irtafa'a Wa qala Muhammad ibn Jirir Fi qawlihi ar-Rahman ala al-arsh istawa أي على وارتفع وشواهده في أقوال الصحابة والتابعين وأتباعهم معروفة. So multiple different تفاسير from the salaf and all of them revolve around these same meanings. 
of Allah rising above the throne. Amma tafsir istawa bistawla. As for saying that istawa means istawla, as some of the people of innovation do, aw malaka aw qahara, fahuwa tafsir batil mardud min wujuh adida. There are some people of innovation who refuse to accept this attribute of Allah, that Allah is the Most High, is above, rose above the throne. There are those from the groups of innovation who refuse to accept that. So then they make their tahrif and their distortion and alteration in order to come to some type of meaning that their intellects can accept. And remember the principle with the people of innovation, تقديم العقل على النقل that they would give their intellects priority over the texts they thought they were too smart they thought their intellects could work out everything and so whatever their intellect could work out that's what they would accept if they came across some of the names and attributes of Allah they couldn't work out so they wouldn't accept them until they found a way to work them out in their mind that was acceptable, then they would accept them upon their understanding they had worked out. So they gave priority and precedence to their intellect over the texts. And that's why the people of innovation used to say that the methodology of the Salaf is Aslam, and their methodology is aqal. They used to say, the people of innovation, that their methodology is smarter. They use their intellect and they work it all out. They used to say their methodology is smarter. And they used to say the methodology of the Salaf, it is safer. They are upon the safe way, they just stick to it as it is. But our methodology, they used to say, is smarter. We are smart. We work it out. Our brains, our intellect, our intelligence, we work it out. The Salaf, they just stick to it as it is, as it is. But we are the smart ones. This is what they used to claim. And their smartness or so-called smartness and intelligence, all of that intellect of theirs, it led them astray. تَقْدِيمُ aqal ala naql. That's what the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah mentioned about them. That they would give their intellects and their minds priority over the texts of what is in the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So one of the things that they did, those who refused to accept that al-istiwa is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rising above the throne. They said it means istawla. Istawla meaning to conquer. That Allah conquered the throne. And this is incorrect from multiple angles. Firstly, minha, هذا مردود من عدة وجوه, minha, أن هذا التفسير, the tafsir of istawa bi istawla, لم يفسره به أحد من السلف, لا من الصحابة ولا من التابعين بل أول من عرف عنه هذا التفسير بعض الجهمية والمعتزلة من أهل البدع This tafsir of theirs that it means istawla Allah conquered over the throne that Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days then he conquered over the throne that tafsir is not known from any of the Salaf for a start. It is not known from any one of the Salaf or the companions that they ever gave that tafsir in regards to istiwa. The first people who that tafsir is known from was some of the Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila. Some of the Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila, it is from them that this type of statement first emanated the claim that istawa means istawla, that Allah then conquered over the throne. 
The second refutation you can mention is that if it means Allah then conquered over the throne, that Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days, then he conquered over the throne. Does that mean that prior to that, Allah was not the all-conquering upon everything and he was not the all-conquering upon the throne? That would mean that Allah was not conquering the throne. He was not in control of the throne prior to that. And that's impossible. It is impossible to say that anything in creation was ever outside of the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that tafsir of theirs doesn't make sense. That Allah created the heavens and the earth. Then he conquered over the throne. What about before that? The throne was outside of the control of Allah before that? Impossible. So that tafsir you can see as well, it cannot work. It cannot work. On top of that, a third answer you can give. إِنَّ الْإِسْتِوَىٰ فِي لُغَةِ الْعَرَبِ الَّذِينَ نَزَلَ الْقُرْآنُ بِلُغَتِهِمْ نَوْعَانِ مُطْلَقْ وَمُقَيَّدْ Istiwa in the Arabic language has two meanings in the Arabic language. An open and general meaning and a specific restricted meaning. فالمطلق ما لم يقيد بحرف The open meaning of istiwa is when there is no harf in the Arabic language attached with it. So in that case, كقوله تعالى لما بلغ أشده واستوى هذه معناها تم وكملة when it's left as it is, then the meaning of istawa in the Arabic language is something which has now uh, been completed and done and it's ready. Like even for cooking, you might use the word istawa. That some food now, it is mustawi. That it's done, it's ready, it's cooked. So in the language, when it's an open usage of the word, it can mean that. With a harf, when you have some type of harf attached to it, then in that case, it has specific meanings. أَمَّا الْمُقَيَّدْ فَثَلَاثَةُ أَنْوَاعٍ أَحَدُهَا مُقَيَّدٌ بِإِلَىٰ With the harf jar, إِلَىٰ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَىٰ إِلَىٰ السَّمَاءِ Then he rose to the sky. إِلَىٰ السَّمَاءِ وَهَذَا بِمَعْنَ الْعُلُوْ وَالْإِرْتِثَاعِ بِإِجْمَاعِ السَّلَىٰ when the ila is used, then that means that it is to rise up and to become high by consensus of the salaf. Or muqayyadun athani bi ala litastawu ala dhuhurihi wa stawat ala al judi. Hada أيضاً معناه العلو والارتفاع والاعتدال بإجماع أهل اللغة. In that case with ala, it also indicates rising up by consensus of the people of the language. والثالث المقرون بواو المعية كقولهم استوى الماء والخشبة وهذا بمعنى سواها. So the third possibility is when you have istawa with a wow, wow al ma'iyah, istawa al ma wal khashaba. When you have the wow with it. And in that meaning, with the wow, it indicates equality between those things occurring. فَهَذِهِ مَعَانِي الْإِسْتِوَىٰ الْمَعْقُولَةِ فِي كَلَامِهِمْ لَيْسَ فِيهَا مَعْتَىٰ وَلَا نَقَلَهُ أَحَدٌ مِنْ أَئِمَّةِ اللُّغَةِ وإنما قاله متأخر النحاة ممن سلك طريق الجهمية والمعتزلة مستدلين ببيت للأخطل النصراني. So this meaning that they claim is stola that it means Allah conquered over the throne, not that Allah rose above the throne. That meaning is not known from any of the Salaf. Neither did they narrate it. Neither did the Salaf at any point narrate that meaning, narrate that tafsir. 
Rather, they use a line of poetry. There is a line of poetry by Al-Akhtal Al-Nasrani, a Christian, where in this line of poetry he says, وَقَدِ اسْتَوَى بِشْرٌ عَلَى الْعِرَاقِ مِنْ غَيْرِ صَيْفٍ أَوْ دَمٍ مِهْرَاقِ That Bishr, he conquered Iraq without a sword or any blood spilt. And the word used in this line of poetry is istawa, to mean conquer in this line of poetry. That is Tawa Bishrun ala al Iraqi min ghairi saifin o damin mihraqi. He conquered over Iraq without a sword or with any blood spilt. Wahadha al bayt awalan laysa min shi'ar al Arab. This poetry is not from the poetry of the Arabs to begin with. Wahadha al Lugha lama sami'uhu ankaruhu ghayat al inkar. Walam yaj'aluhu min Lugha al Arab. And when this poetry was heard by the Arabs and the experts of the Arabs, they rejected this line of poetry and refused it. And it is not from the language of the Arabs, they declared. So that is a false evidence that the people of innovation use. Also, some of the scholars have mentioned that in terms of Bishr, conquering upon Iraq and the word istawa being used they say that even if it was correct let's assume this line of poetry is correct they say when Bishr conquered Iraq and he now had control of Iraq he went to the the the, the main palace or whatever and he actually physically walked up to sit on the the throne of Iraq. He actually went up to sit on the throne of Iraq. So in that case, Istawa would actually be applicable in the actual meaning of going up because he physically went up and sat on the throne of Iraq. So the scholars have said, even if you want to use this poetry, Istawa doesn't mean Istawla. It literally means Istawa that he rose up and sat on the throne of Iraq. And that's if it's true. And the scholars have mentioned this line of poetry is not correct in the first place. Then, ثالثاً إِنَّ مَعْنَ هَذِهِ الْكَلِمَةِ مَشْهُورٌ كَمَا قَالَ مَالِكٌ وَرَبِيعًا وَغَيْرِهِمْ The meaning of the word al-istiwa is well known and there is no ambiguity within it. As Al Imam Malik and Al Imam Rabi'a mentioned, another than them. Rabi'an, innahu law lam yakun ma'an al istiwa fil ayati ma'luman lam yhtaj an yakula wal kayfu majhul. Lanna nafi al ilm bil kayf la yanfi illa o la yunfa illa ma qad ulima asluhu. If it was the case that istiwa was not the normal known meaning, then he would not have needed to say to him, Wal kayfu majhul. If we did not know what al istiwa means in the first place, then obviously we don't know the kayf. If you don't know something in its essence in the first place, then you obviously don't know the details and the kayf of that thing. The only way it would become a logical question to ask the kayf is if you knew the original basis you were starting from. If you have the original basis, you know that, then you could ask, but how about this and how about that and how does this work and how does that work? But if you don't even know the original item, the first basis, then how can you start asking how this and how that? You don't even know what it is yet. So the fact that Al-Imam Malik said to him, Wal kayfu majhul, the how is unknown, proves that all of them knew the basis. And the basis being Al-Istiwa. They all knew, the Arabs knew, the Salaf knew, 
The Sahaba knew what Al-Istiwa is. That was known. The basis was known. But the how does Allah rise up was not known. If the basis was not known in the first place, what is Istiwa? Then there wouldn't be any point and there wouldn't be any need to say that the how is unknown. Because if the basis is unknown, then obviously the how is also unknown. So the fact that Imam Malik told him the how is unknown proves that the basis was known. And that is a bit like when we get to the section about seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ayah where it says, لا تدركه الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار That the eyesight cannot encompass Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The eyesight cannot encompass Allah. The people of innovation said that's a proof you cannot see Allah. Ahlu Sunnah say it's actually a proof you can see Allah. Because Allah is telling us your eyesight cannot encompass Him. Meaning cannot understand Him. If we were not going to be able to see Allah in the first place, then obviously we cannot encompass or comprehend him we're not going to be able to see him in the first place so why did Allah say you're not going to be able to comprehend because in the first place you are going to be able to see Allah but then after that you're not going to be able to comprehend from the might and majesty if you were not going to be able to see Allah in the first place there'd be no point saying that you're not going to be able to comprehend him if you cannot see him in the first place, then obviously you cannot comprehend him. So the fact that Allah affirmed you will not be able to comprehend seeing Allah proves that we will actually be able to see Allah, but that we will not be able to comprehend what we see from the might and majesty of Allah. Same here. The only reason Al-Imam Malik was highlighting to him that you don't know the how is because the asal, the basis was known, al-istiwa was known, but the how was not known. If the istiwa was not known as well, then the how would obviously not be known, and al-imam Malik wouldn't need to say that to him. So this proves again, al-istiwa is known, the basis is known, but the how is not known thereafter. And then خَامِسًا إِنَّ الْإِسْتِوَى خَاصٌ بِالْعَرْشِ وَأَمَّا الْإِسْتِيلَاءِ فَهُوَ عَامٌ عَلَى سَائِرِ الْمَخْلُوقَاتِ فَلَوْ كَانَ مَعْنَا الْإِسْتِوَى الْإِسْتِيلَاءِ لَجَازَ أَنْ يَقُولَ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْمَاءِ وَالْهَوَى وَالْأَرْضِ استوى that is specific to Allah rising above the throne whereas istawla that is something open. It is not even specific. Istawla could occur upon anything in the creation. So once again, it is incorrect for them to try and make that the specific meaning regarding the ayat of the arsh. Because istawla is an open thing uh, applicable to anything in creation. Whereas the istawa, the istiwa, that is for Allah above the throne specifically. And sixthly, أنه أخبر بخلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش وأخبر أن عرشه على الماء قبل خلق لا خلقهما والاستوى متأخر عن خلقهن والله مستول على العرش قبل خلق السماوات وبعده. This is what we mentioned before about the conquering. If it means the conquering of the throne. Then Allah has always been conquering over the throne from before and after. You're not going to say that whilst Allah was creating the heavens and the earth, the throne was outside of the conquering of Allah, outside of the control of Allah. Then Allah conquered over it. That cannot be the case. And that would be false for a person to claim that. And the final one, the seventh one. إِنَّهُ لَمْ يَثْبُتْ فِي أَنَّ مَعْنَ اسْتَوَى اسْتَوْلَى إِذَا الَّذِينَ قَالُوا ذَلِكَ عُمْدَتُهُمُ الْبَيْتِ الْمَذْكُورِ So in the Arabic language, it has never been established that istawa can have the meaning of istawla. 
It is not proven in the Arabic language that you can make the meaning of istawla, conquering over something, from istawa. And so there is no basis for that misguided interpretation of theirs and that misguided tafsir of theirs because they want to reject that Allah is the Most High and above the throne. And maybe they want to say Allah is everywhere and other types of false aqidah. So they make these distortions and they change the meanings of things away from the original and actual meanings that are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. That's just the opening section regarding Al-Istiwa. There's a few more uh, sections we're going to do yet, another lesson or two at least, regarding the throne of Allah, the description of that, or what's been mentioned to us, and about the angels that carry the throne of Allah. So there are some details of that nature. We'll come to those in the following lessons. But that is the opening section on Al-Istiwa. So we'll conclude upon that for today. And we'll resume with the later sections next time, insha'Allah ta'ala.